Good morning. Um, this morning I've got St. Elizabeth of Hungary. Now, normally I wouldn't um, align myself with like princes and queens and such like that. And I think she was a queen. Uh, she's a do uh, daughter of Hungarian royalty. And uh, as was done in those days, uh, marriages were planned based on political things. And um, as a result, uh, they met her up with a, a prince down in Germany um, in the area of, give me a second here, Thuringia in southern Germany. And um, it was interesting because, because they were making this setup, they sent her to live with the family, the, uh, the boy that she was going to be marrying. So uh, at the age of four, she is shipped off to this area in southern Germany from Hungary. And um, there she, she meets and gets to be good friends with this uh, Ludwig, who's now nine years old. So five years older than her, but they're just kids. And uh, as you might think, a, a arranged marriage wouldn't be a real good thing. But as it turned out for them, it turned out very well. They uh, uh, came and um, got to be really good buddies and good friends. And uh, as they got older, a romance also uh, ensued with that. Uh, so it worked out real well. Um, as she got older, though, the family was getting real concerned because she seemed to be getting too pious. Uh, she spent a lot of time in prayer. She did a lot of things like giving alms out. And they just didn't think this kind of melded with the right way that a, a potential queen w would behave. Uh, but nonetheless, um, Ludwig was just absolutely nuts about her and didn't care about anything that was said. And they get married in, uh, I think it's 12... I'm not sure the exact year they got married. They got married. Uh, I'm sure they're fairly young at this point. So um, she has three children uh, in very short order. And then shortly after that, um, and there's a point where Ludwig is gone. And um, there's a, a famine that happens in, in the land. And all the people just don't have enough food to eat. Well, she opens up the royal granaries and gives out to the poor. So many lives were saved by her action. Now, the rich people were just shocked with this. And uh, when Ludwig came back, he finds that his wife is now like the element of scorn, that the, the whole people are very much against uh, what she is and what she's doing. Um, but he stands by her, absolutely 100%. And then it's in, uh, I think, 1227 that he'll get a, uh, a calling and then he accepts a position uh, to join the Crusades, going to the Holy Land. And that's all well, fine, and good. But Elizabeth, who's pregnant, has a terrible uh, feeling about this. And so when she issues her goodbye or says her goodbyes, it's a pretty emotional moment in time for her. And um, while she's doing this, um, and as she has been queen, uh, she, because of the marriage and all that, and she's now princess and then queen, um, she starts giving out alms. She uh, does it much more aggressively than before set up several hospitals now we think of a hospital today in a certain sense but i think this is like converting small castles in their lands uh to places where the indigent could come and, and re be recovered from illness and she herself would go and work at these uh, but nonetheless her husband goes off and uh, he dies of plague on the journey so he didn't die in battle he dies of a disease and comes back and when word comes back that he's gone well they look at her and say you're out of here. And they literally um, treat her poorly. And uh, she ends up leaving with her newborn child. She had been pregnant when he left. And when after he was born and she was being neglected, um, she went off. Um, now, to some extent, uh, there's a small part of this that helped her. She uh, had had a confessor. Um, I don't know his name here. Uh, Conrad, who had been um, Master Conrad, I guess they call him. And uh, he had been pretty cruel to her. Uh, making really strict demands, um, asking her to do more and more that was almost like self-flagellating. And he himself would hit her with a stick when he didn't, she didn't live up to some of the things he was demanding of her. So there's a real strange relationship. But as a part of this, he had gotten rid of the two gals that had watched her since she was a baby and got two other girls who uh, basically spied on her and would tell him everything that she did wrong. And this just was really tough. But as she left uh, the castle, uh, she basically was kicked out. She takes her, her newborn child with her, and uh, off she goes. Well, she's not accepted in any of the homes. Uh, she ends up going in a pig stable and staying in there for a few days and wandering about. And it's so embarrassing to the royal family that here this former queen... Uh, 
uh, is out there and just living this horrid life. Um, but at the time, she felt more connected with the poverty. And, and she'd always been trying to help the poor. And now she felt like she understood and was walking with them. She even went back to her confessor and got permission to go beg for alms. And these begging of alms, she would take all this money and then give it away to other poor people. Um, really kind of an amazing thing for a young girl. She's not very old at this age. Um, and uh, the, the family, again, is so embarrassed that they actually send and have her uh, live in a small little cottage house that they provide for her so that it's not quite so embarrassing. But her reputation for holiness and generosity and this care of the poor um, gets her to be a fair amount of fame to her. Um, and that sounds like that's be a good thing, but lo and behold, she goes and, and very shortly after, um, I think it's uh, 1231. So now that she's born in 1207, so do the math and you find out, well, this girl, she's she's been queen, she had three kids, she's been kicked out, she's been super generous, she sets up hotels, uh, uh, excuse me, hospital type things, does all of these things, and she's only 24 years old. It's the young girl. Um, the young can do wonderful things, and maybe we need to look more to the young and expect wonderful things from them. Uh, and yet, her sense of um, generosity is one that is captured in her line. She says, um, uh, in her quote, she says, We must give God what we have gladly and with joy. Now, we don't know exactly what she died of so quickly when she's only 24, but she got ill and, and dies. Um, but to have that sense of generosity with joy, it's, uh, uh, they just gave a homily the other day and ended up with the fact of what is it we really want? We really want joy. And that's a gift of God. And let us rejoice today in our gift, leaning towards a sense of generosity, but knowing that the grace that we get is a joy in the serving and in the giving.